Hi, I'm Karen Hodgins, creator of Nifty Numbers and Math Medley Family Math Lights. And in this video, I'm going to share with you an activity that teaches and reinforces angles and angle measurement. Now, this lesson meets Common Core State Standards 5 and 6 in the 4th grade measurement and data standard. Okay, so the materials that you're going to need are paper plates. Um, and I like to have at least three paper plates per student. And I buy the real cheap plates because they're going to be easier to work with. And you'll see what I mean in just a minute. And then you're going to need tissue paper in a variety of colors. And I like to have the tissue paper pre-cut so that there's about half an inch to an inch going all the way around um, the paper plate. So that's pre-cut. And then each student is going to need a ruler, a fine tip, felt tip pen, um, a pencil, a pair of scissors, some glue, a protractor. And I like the protractors that have the holes in the center and then that line that goes across because that's going to make it easier for students when they start measuring their angles. And the final thing that they're going to need is um, a compass. Okay, so the first thing that I, I have students do is I pass out a paper plate so they each have a paper plate and then they're going to work in pairs or small groups to figure out the exact or as close to the exact center of the paper plate or the circle um, as they can get. Um, now this is a great uh, problem solving activity for them. It's also a great way for them to uh, practice communicating mathematically because they're going to need to share out and justify um, how they determined um, what that center or where that center is. Okay, so some students are going to get their rulers and they're going to start measuring and to come up with the center. And then some students are going to figure out that if they fold the paper plate in one direction, and then they fold it in the other direction. When they open that up, where those perpendicular lines meet, that's the center of the circle. Okay, and I'm actually gonna have all students do this because we're gonna create a template. So they're gonna fold this paper plate like that, and they're gonna get their scissors, and they're gonna cut this, the vertex right there, the tip, just a teeny, teeny, tiny piece off of that, teeny, tiny, because all we want is to get a small hole right in the center there. It's hardly anything at all if you can see that. Um, right smack in the center, okay, that teeny, tiny hole there, and that's what they're going to use later when they mark the center of their um, tissue paper, paper plates. Okay, so they'll hold on to this, um, and then the next thing that they're going to do is cover um, two paper plates with tissue paper, but before they cover it with the tissue paper, um, I have them flatten out the paper plates. And this is what I mean by buying the cheap ones because it's easier to do this with the cheap ones. So they actually do this on their desk, but I'm gonna do it up here um, for you just to show you. They're gonna take their ruler and they're gonna flatten this out as best as they can. They're gonna work it, work it, work it, turn it over, work it, work it, work it again, turn it back over and so forth until they get it pretty flat. I mean, it's not gonna be all the way flat, but it's gonna be pretty flat if you can see that. And they're gonna do that with um, uh, both of their paper plates. And now they're ready to put the uh, tissue paper on here. So they're gonna use that glue. And the key with the glue is, well, there's two things. Um, one, you don't wanna put on too much glue because then you're going to rip the tissue paper. Um, but you do want to get enough glue on here, um, and you're gonna, they're going to spread it around with their finger. You want to cover that whole plate with a very, very thin layer of glue um, because that's going to help get that whole piece of tissue paper nice and firm on there. Okay, so when it's like this, then they can uh, just trim off the, this excess here a little bit so that um, here, here's the front side. And then on the back, they're going to have that little bit there that they're going to glue down. Okay, so they're going to do that with um, both paper plates. Then let those paper plates dry. And then they're going to get that template back, the one with the little teeny tiny circle in it. And they're going to grab their felt tip pen because this is what they're going to use to mark the exact center of both paper plates. You can see that right there. So they're going to do that to both paper plates. And then they're going to take their ruler okay. and they're going to draw the and this is a good opportunity to talk about math vocabulary you talk about the circumference you can talk about the diameter and then you can talk about the radius because they're actually going to draw in the radius and they can do this with a pencil 
So they'll draw the radius on both of those. See, there's the first one. And then they'll draw it on the second one. Nice straight line. And then they're going to choose one of the paper plates, not both of them. They're just going to do this to one. One of the paper plates, and they're going to use that compass, and they're going to draw a circle right smack in the center there. And they're going to use that felt tip pen to do that. So I'm going to draw a circle right here in the center. Okay, just like that. Voila. And actually, that's what they're going to use to measure their angles. Um, you'll see how that works when you put the plates together. But first, we need to cut okay, on that radius. And I tell the students to cut as straight a line as they can. Just follow that straight line that they just made all the way right to the center. Okay as straight as they can get. So there's one, and now they're gonna cut that second one. Straight, 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 right down to the center. And now the fun part, because they're gonna put the plates together. So we've got those two, um, two cuts, and we just slide our plates together like that. Perfect, in fact, I could probably put this yellow one just a tad more so that the plates end up exactly together. Let's try that one. There we go, that's a little bit, yeah, that's perfect. Okay, just like that, okay, so perfect. So now, the reason why we do that circle in there is because we're gonna use that circle. That's gonna be what our, uh, our where we measure our angle. So for example, if I wanted to make a right angle, we know that that's 90 degrees, and by the way, this banner behind me that shows our angles, our acute angles, which are less than 90 degrees, our right angles, which are exactly 90 degrees, and obtuse angles, which are um, greater than 90 degrees. This comes from our um, Math Medley Family Math Night Kit. So, okay, so we've made an angle that's 90 degrees, okay, like that. And you can actually have students use the protractors, oops, to confirm that, okay. And again, the reason why I like these protractors is because that little center circle right there is gonna go right on that vertex. Okay. And then that line on the protractor is going to line up with this line right here. And then when students do that, they can measure, and my paper plate's moving a little bit, okay. Um, they can measure that angle, okay, and get the exact angle measurement. And now you can practice with students. Okay, um, can you make an angle that is 130 degrees? So they make a guesstimate about 130 degrees, and again, they take their protractor and they line up that circle on there, and they line it up right on the line there, and then they go up, and oop, I was like two degrees off. So mine is 128 degrees, okay, but pretty darn close to 130 degrees, and so forth. Um, you can have them make, now this line here, okay, a straight line like that, is an, has an angle measurement of 180 degrees, and we know that circle has 360 degrees. When you move into an angle measurement that's larger than 180 degrees, okay, now you're talking about an angle that's called a reflex angle. And you could pose this problem to them. How would you measure okay, um, this angle here? And there's several ways to do that. They can draw a line across here or and then know that that's 180 degrees and then measure the difference in here and then add that to 180 degrees. Or they could measure this angle here, this yellow one, and subtract that from 360 degrees, but a great way for them to think about and problem solve how they would do that. So super fun activity that gets kids to um, learn about and reinforces angles and angle measurements, so have fun.